Welcome back to section four of chapter three. In this section, we're going to be looking at properties of logarithmic functions. Our learning targets, rewrite expressions using properties of logarithms, use the change of base formula to evaluate logarithms, prove properties of logarithms, graph logarithmic functions involving bases other than 10 and E, and solve applications involving properties of logarithmic functions. So our properties of logs, we have a few properties. We've got the product rule that says that log base B of something, notice the bases on all of these stay the same. It's not going to change that. But if we're multiplying two things inside of a log, that means that we could add them. And the same, it goes both directions on that one. So if we have, say, um, log base 6 of 9 plus log base 6 of 4, we could, that's adding, so we could multiply those together to get log base 6 of 36, and 6 to the what power equals 36? 2. So we could take a problem that we're not going to be able to do in our head and combine them and be able to do it in our head. We could also split them up. Splitting them up is less useful unless you are trying to separate a variable. So we could take, I'm just going to go common log here. Log of 3x could be split up to be log 3 plus log x. Um, quotient rule is the same thing except we're dividing and subtracting. So we add for products, we divide for quotients. Um, and then the power rule, this one is one that is huge. This one's so important. Um, if we have, let's say, log base 2 of 8 to the fifth power, we can take that 5 and move it out in front of the log to get 5 times log base 2 of 8. Log base 2 of 8 is 3, so it's just 5 times 3, which is 15. Now, this, this property is super important because we're going to have an x. We're going to have things like log of 7 to the x. And that x can come out in front. And all of a sudden, now we have x times a number. Log base set, log of 7 is just a number. So we have x, of an, x times a number, and we'll be able to figure out what x equals. That's coming up a little bit later. But um, that's using the power rule, and it's so important. Um, change of base formula. Change of base formula is nice because our calculators do logs and natural logs, like common logs, natural logs. What if we have a log base 7? Well, there we get change of base formula. And what the change of base formula is, we have log base b of x equals log of the new base of x over log of the new base of the old base. So if we had, say, log base 7 of 13, well, 7 to the what equals 13? I don't know. My calculator's not going to do it. All right, well, we can change this. This could be, we can change it to log base 10 of 13 over log base 10 of 7. Now we can just plug this into the calculator. Um, if we have, say, log base 2 of x, that'll be log x over log 2. Log 2 is just a number. So we could rewrite that as 1 over log 2 times log x. We have our log x function times a constant. A change of base is just a vertical translation. 
no nope. vertical stretch stretch or compression not translation vertical stretch or compression that's all the change of base is when we change that base we stretch things that's it um, just like when we added something up here log 3x well we could split that up log 3 plus log x so that log x this is a vertical this one was a vertical translation when we add, multiply something inside of the log that ends up being a vertical translation which could also be a horizontal um, translation think of it inside the log they end up being the same not the same amount but the same thing no horizontal stretch or compression yeah so our log function looks just like the natural log function because the natural log function is a stretch or compression vertically um, so we have a vertical asymptote at zero so the domain x has to be greater than zero range is from negative infinity to positive infinity because it will continue to increase just very very slowly um, the basic function log base b of x goes through the points one comma zero and b comma one um, it's increasing the whole time it's continuous no symmetry not bounded above or below um, no extrema because it just keeps going up no horizontal asymptotes we have the vertical asymptote and then end behavior as x goes to infinity y also goes to infinity um, and so this again is just log base b of x with any base which base has to be greater than one um, it will do all this stuff so it does not matter what the base is changing the base is a vertical stretch or compression multiplying something on the inside is a horizontal stretch or compression we know that from the uh, our transformation rules um, it could also be a vertical translation um, Um, but other than that all of our all of our um, transformation rules still apply if we wanted to make it negative log of X I'm gonna go common log that's gonna flip it upside down so it's gonna make it look instead of going up it's gonna come down like that we could go log of negative x that's going to flip it um, horizontally to make it go that way uh, we could add things inside to make a horizontal translation we can multiply to make horizontal stretches or compressions we can do vertical stretches and compressions vertical translations we can do all of these things the same stuff that we've been able to do for any kind of polynomial you're going to do and the rules work exactly the same way for any transformation so and i know that we've seen this before you saw this in algebra 2 um, and especially transformations you saw that a lot in algebra 2 so i will leave you with that but i will see you in class until then keep working problems keep asking questions and as always Happy mathing.